Hey everyone, this is Chris from Echobind. I miss seeing all of you in person, but I'm really, really happy to be here. So I'm going to be talking to you today about Next.js and why it is a framework for frameworks. So what does that mean? Let's dig in a little bit. So to start, uh, we're going to talk about why Next is the best in class solution for building web projects today. So apps and sites. Um, and then we're going to take that and reframe it. And we're going to look instead as look at next as a building block. So rather than just that, what can we do by just changing our mindset? And once we've kind of talked through that a little bit, we're going to look at two open source projects that are doing this today. And then what that kind of means for the future of, you know, projects like those as well as next itself. So best in class for the web. So I like to think of Next as static yet dynamic. If you need static HTML and CSS, dynamic data, or any combination of the two on a per page basis, I don't think there's a better way for you to build that today than Next. So not only that, but we get all these features where we're not configuring things very much. We don't have to deal with we're properly code split. Our bundle sizes are nice. We can do incremental static generation. Um, I mean, there's there's so much here. I do not have time to go into it all, but hopefully most of you know these features already. So that's really great. But let's think about instead of just focusing on building apps and sites for the web, let's focus on Next as a building block for bigger things. So to do that, we're thinking about building blocks. And when you build things with blocks, you add more and more blocks to it. And you can do this from scratch every single time. But what's really interesting is if you can figure out a way to take these blocks and put them together to enable things, enable you to move even faster than you would have before. So you take these blocks and instead you make this your starting point. So now you have an almost house that you're then just going to have to put walls, you know, a front door, a roof, things like that. But the basics are done. So that's really cool. And just to kind of think about this a little bit, you know, how many of you often write your own router code or your own webpack config? You can do it. But in most of your day-to-day -day projects, like, are you doing that? I would argue most people are not now. So we can use this type of concept to drive innovation because we're not focusing on everything that it takes to make this house. We're only focusing on what it takes to move forward. So with that in mind, let's talk about how we can keep our mindset of a building block and then look at these projects that are already doing this today with Next. So if I had to summarize what I mean, in this, in this section, it's basically build on shared solutions and proven architectures. The two projects we're going to be looking at are in the full stack Jamstack space. And that might be new to some of you. Uh, FS Jam is kind of the term being thrown around right now. It's a brand new community, fsjam.org. Recommend checking it out if you're interested in this kind of thing. So it's not just the Jamstack, it's the Jamstack plus the API and the database layer all in one. That's the goal. So there are a few different projects that are in this general space. Redwood JS is one, Blitz JS is another, and we uh, recently released a project at Echobind called Bison. So let's specifically focus on Blitz JS and Bison. And the reason I want to do that is because both of these projects are built with Next as the starting point. So think about that again. All of Next plus whatever else these two frameworks or projects decide to do. So in the case of Blitz, the high-level overview from my point of view is you basically ignore the API. You get a lot for you out of the box. There's this really nice CLI and recipes for adding new features, all these things. Um, but you don't you 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 basically don't have to worry about sort of what would traditionally be set up the API, call it from the front end, that type of thing. 
that to me is one of the biggest focuses. Now you can still have an API with Blitz. Um, and I'll let Brandon, who I believe is at this conference and also speaking, let him kind of fully explain that to you because he can, he can give you all the details you need. So let's look at Bison for a second. So Bison is similar in the sense that it also builds on Next.js. That is the foundation. So on top of that, we've added a bunch of conventions and, you know, a CLI to help get you going. And what we do there is basically, you know, the goal is to have a push button production ready next app that includes GitHub actions for the CI that includes end to end testing against a real test database includes kind of how you deploy the thing and various, you know, lot, lots of stuff that would typically take you weeks, if not months of just kind of figuring out on your own. So trying to, again, take all that off the table, the same way that next is trying to take a lot off the table by default. The major difference here is that we're all this stuff's kind of in the open. So we generate it all for you. And if you want to modify it, go for it, but that's kind of what's going on there. So what are some things that neither one of these two projects had to worry about in doing all of this? Well, we didn't have to worry about code splitting or static assets or rendering on the server, prefetching of links, webpack routing, all that stuff. This is all stuff that would have taken probably years to create because Next has been going on for that long. And just the fact that we don't have to worry about any of it unless we have to override it is amazing. So really the goal here is not to reinvent the wheel, especially if that wheel is really, really good. So looking at these two open source projects and knowing that they're finding success in using Next as a base, where can we take it from there? How do we enable the future? So I like to think of software development and community in three kind of buckets. It starts with experimentation, and then that experiment phase needs to be validated. There might be multiple experience, sp experiments. And so you validate them and they're either correct or they're not. You might go back and run more experiments and keep trying things, but eventually you reach this point where you converge. And when you do that, it allows you to use that as your next level up. So that is now your new ground floor abstraction and you build on top of it. So there's a lot of examples of this. I'll give you just a few general ideas just to get you thinking about it. Um, if we think about React, React started as a just choose your own adventure type thing with little pieces all over the place. Create React app became a thing. Um, some tooling was around and then, you know, we have next now. Um, thinking about how we use CSS. I mean, there were CSS and SAS and post CSS, CSS and JS, Tailwind, all these things. And so these are in various stages of experiment, validate, converge. Um, you know, I think, I think that the point here is that not that there's only one way to do it, but more just that the community in general is converging on an idea. If you never converge, you're only going to have fragmentation. So where does next sit here? If we look at the wider react community, I believe we're in the early phases of converge. And I say that because mass adoption has started to occur. occur. Every single time I'm talking with potential clients, I'm hearing about Next.js. And there are 60,000 some people at this conference. And that's amazing. That just goes to show you, yes, it's online, but that shows you there's a very big demand for Next. And so we are converging. And I think that there's going to be some additional steps there. But again, that's going to become our new baseline. And we're going to build on higher from that. We can also zoom into the next community and not look at the wider React ecosystem, but just the Next.js project. So if we do that and think about experiment, validate, converge, we can think through, you know, how features are done via RFC and feature flags and testing. And eventually when converge happens, we get a new release that's bigger and better than it was before. And we keep building on this. It's always improving. So all that said, what's, what's next up? What's next for next? I believe it's going to keep blazing the trail for modern React development. 
it's going to become the base layer for more frameworks. And so this is not to say that we're going to have thousands of frameworks or we should, but more that more people will take ideas and inspiration and likely use next as the starting point. And then we can take that a step further. And maybe there are pieces within next that could be modularized and brought to other communities and brought to other areas to where um, this just enables us to do things that we haven't even thought of yet, which is really, really exciting. And the best thing about all of that is all of these ideas can make their way back down to make the general next project even better than it already is. So that's very exciting. That's all I've got for this. Um, hope this kind of sparks some ideas and gives you the next time you go think about creating something, especially if it involves adding, creating a web framework or something like that. Think about how Next can help you with that journey and take you to the next step much, much quicker than you would be if you just started doing all of it from scratch. Because honestly, I don't feel like we need to always do that. And sometimes as developers, that's the path we go down. So. Come say hi in the uh, Echobind channel on Discord. We'll be hanging out in there. If you want to talk Bison, full stack, jam stack, next, anything like that, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Most of all, I really appreciate all of your time. And thank you very much to Next JS Conf for having me.